try to help you to understand that what are the career opportunities in the in the in the blockchain and how things are actually actually working so what do you think about blockchain what is the definition of blockchain when you hear about it when you've heard about that one thing you all have in common that it's a decentralization it's more secure now i'll tell you, you know uh, the biggest application of blockchain that we have been speaking about is, is bitcoins right but but the question is that that blockchain came into existence only because because bitcoin as an application as a currency got successful but the question that everyone was asking as that before in 2009 the satoshi nakamoto group or people they established a white paper about peer to peer currency exchange that does not require any kind of third party interaction for for doing a transaction so let's say for example if as of now and today if i have to send my money to a different bank account or different person i actually need a lot of people who do the back end job like the moment i initiate a transaction there's a bank and there are verifiers auditors rbi etc i mean just to make some payment i have to literally go through ten lot of people but and then think about a cross border scenario if i have to send something in terms of monetary aspect from india to let's say let's say us or germany or russia for example i literally have to wait for more than 40 to 8 hours to 72 hours to get my money transferred and i'm i'm pretty much sure you all have somehow or somewhere in your life must have done a transaction which is cross border and you've seen what are the problems so you know the the if you take take this but throughout the history the instruments of trust such as you know the minted coins the paper money the letter of credits or banking system they all have emerged to facilitate the exchange of value and protect the buyers and sellers right but the important innovations like take telephone lines the credit card systems or you can say the internet everything is, has been developed in order to improve the convenience the speed and efficiency of all the transaction but even we have so many technology upgrades available in the market many business transaction they still remain inefficient expensive and i would say they're vulnerable and, and the biggest reason behind that if you say let's just talk about a quick example about cash transactions now cash is only useful in local transactions i mean you can say in a very relatively small amount I and mean, we cannot take millions of cash with you and and go and do a transaction if you have to make an instant purchase or do that the time between your transactions and settlement are really long even in the state the duplication efforts i mean and third party validation that actually increases a lot of time for me and one of the biggest concern with the current transaction system for the payment that we have is are the fraud the cyber attacks and you know even a simple mistake can actually add a lot of cost and complexity of doing my business and and these are the biggest problem that, that i have to actually face while doing a transaction and if you take it this way transactions volumes worldwide is growing exponentially and you know it is surely uh, going to magnify the complexities because every day we have more number of transactions because more number of users are coming into play and and to manage these transactions to get that whole volume we would need a a better system to work and with the emergence of the internet of things i'll tell you the the these refrigerators or the autonomous objects you know which are going to uh, order the supplies when we are not at home and, and getting things done by itself is also on the transactions and you know before i get into furthermore i personally believe that anything that happens on the internet is a transaction whatever we do over the internet whether you talk about sending money whether you about sending a message whether you about downloading a file sending a file anything it's a transaction how because for me as a user let's say if i go and click on download a file i'm just downloading a file for me it's something coming from the internet but practically at the back end it's a transaction i am actually sending a transaction or send a download request in terms of a transaction to a server and the server responding to the request and sending back the transaction of file to me making me to to download the file and that's what's all about transaction so everything that happens on the internet i mean i can go on and on transaction cycle and why it's like this way everything that happen on the internet is transaction from sending a message to downloading a file for watching a movie over the internet anything that we do on the internet it's transaction and why blockchain is disruptive because blockchain is helping the transaction ecosystem to get sorted it's helping the transaction ecosystem to become immutable it's helping the transaction ecosystem to become disruptive and, and when we when we talk about the bitcoin you know the emergence of bitcoin 
one of the solution which has been developed to address the complexities uh, of the current transaction system is Bitcoin. So I'll tell you one thing, Bitcoin is not blockchain. The biggest confusion that a lot of people globally has is that Bitcoin and blockchain are the same. No, they're not. Bitcoin is one of the application which is used to develop the blockchain. Now, a blockchain is the public ledger of, you can see, all the Bitcoin transactions that have ever been executed. That means from the day one to right now, whatever transactions that has happened on the Bitcoin ecosystem, they are all on a public ledger and that's what the blockchain is all about. It is, you know, this, this ledger is constantly growing, you know, because the miners, they add new blocks to it every, every few minutes to record the most recent transaction. And then the blocks are added to the blockchain, you can say, in a linear chronological order. That means if there are block A, B, C, the block A, B, C will get added to the blockchain one by one by one in a linear method. And every, every computer that's, or every machine that is connected to the Bitcoin network using a client that performs the task of, you know, validating and relaying the transaction has a copy of blockchain, which is actually downloaded automatically when this person or which we call as a miner or a node or a computer joins the Bitcoin network. So practically the blockchain has a complete information about all the addresses, accounts, balances from the first block to the most recently completed block. I'm sure you enjoyed learning from this video. Please like the video and if you have any doubts regarding this video, please comment us in the comment section and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more such informative videos. Do look out for other related videos in our playlist. For more information, visit our website now. Keep learning with IntelliPat.